Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well there, hello, and good morning kids and cubs, and welcome to season three and episode number 354, I believe it is, no, sorry, 55, of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network, yay, today recording day is Monday, April 8th, 2024, and this is a special Eclipse edition of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. <laughs> I love it. A little style. Ah, man. Uh, I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Um, we're going to have a quick show for you today because uh, your eager beaver is still in curling playoffs. So we have a match today. Uh, which was supposed to be at 1.30. We were supposed to have a longer show, but because it's Eclipse Day and a lot of people wanted to see it and uh, uh, we're right, right, right in the band here in uh, Kingston. So uh, there's stories about a million people expected in Niagara Falls. Well, there's about 500,000 expected here. And I wow. think Kingston's a city of 130,000 people. Yeah, you're, you're, you guys are going to be really crowded. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we have family coming. Uh, well, Niagara Falls is what? Is it 100,000 in Niagara Falls? Is it that big? I know it's not even that big. I'm, I'm not sure at all what the population of Niagara Falls is. But, they're, but they're I mean, it, but it's more of a tourist hub, right? Yeah. To start with. So there's a, like here, it's, that's not necessarily the case, yeah. right? Um, well, Kingston so, is a tourism town, but not like Niagara Falls is. Right? No, 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 nothing like Niagara Falls. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and uh, we have family coming. So um, yesterday was house cleaning day for us, and for uh, by us I mean uh, Beaver Sweetie, because uh, I was fried. <laughs> I was of no use to nobody yesterday. Well, correction, correction. We had both our shows on Saturday, mm. and then um, Riverhead uh, Brewing Company. If you have an opportunity to support them, please do. Um, their establishment was closed, uh, but they opened it up after the show just for us. So for the first time in my life, I was at a, like, you know, you always hear those private bar parties or the bars closed and everybody that's in the bar gets to stay and, you know, do what they want. But that was my, my first one sort of like that. So it was a fun, uh, a fun evening it was just us. Um, didn't stay too long. Um, and the next day I had some curling in the morning and then we helped uh, move the stage. So when we struck the stage on the Saturday, we just took all the props out and all that kind of stuff and put the clothes away and cleaned up the space. But, uh, you know, the scaffolding and the platforms and whatnot, those had to be dismantled and moved and put on a trailer and whatnot. So that was the next morning. So I went, we went there and did that. And then I was useless. <laughs> Yes. Um, so um, yesterday, uh, the Beaver Sweetie uh, removed everything off the floors, swept, mopped, uh, 
tidied up and um, I slept and then I uh, folded clothes and put clothes away and then we went to the cast party and then I came home and then I slept. <laughs> I, I was... <laughs> um, s s someone's going to be taken out for dinner. <clears throat> I, yeah, I can well imagine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. So, I, so I, I, badonka -donk, badonka -donk, doggy. I am sore all over. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, but very, 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 very happy. And as you can see, I'm very much awake because with all that sleeping, I kind of woke up at four o'clock this morning. So I, I've not slept all. <laughs> Uh, the entire weekend I, I barely slept it's saturday morning up early 7 a.m which is late actually technically but took her out took lola out at 7 a.m on saturday we got to the end so i come out in the front door of my building we get to the corner and she slipped out of her prong collar and took off down the street so i ran and, I, and there was a lady walking her dog and i'm like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i grabbed a hold of her leash hmm. And she took off again. So uh, her, she, so she wore, she wore her prong collar and a regular collar, her Harley collar. It's a big pink Harley nylon collar. Finally caught up to her and I hooked into her collar and she was like, nope, and slipped backwards, pulled the collar off her head and took off again. And I'm like, oh no. Like, how am I going to get a hold of her? Chased her down Bank Street <laughs> on Saturday morning. As she's running down the middle of Bank Street, sniffing the yellow line. I'm not joking. We had all kinds of people trying to help us catch her. It took us over an hour and she ran. I don't know whether we, where we finally ended up catching her in a parking lot somewhere. And some young guy uh, who's unhoused had a tennis ball. So he brought the tennis ball and he got her and he was playing with her. And I kept trying to grab her and she kept running away. And then finally she jumped up to give me a hug. And I just wrap my arms around her <laughs> and Bridget st st straddled her while this young man put the collar on her. And then I clipped her in and I was like, oh God, it was a rather terrifying way to start the day to say the least. And we do, I do have a shoulder harness. We have a couple of them. Um, but she, all she did was when I put the shoulder harness, she would pull, pull, pull. So we got the prong collar. It was like, well, I'm not using a prong collar anymore. Because she got out of that so easily, it disturbed me. So I've got a, a <laughs> I've got a, a body harness on her now, and it's supposed to to prevent her from pulling. That I got literally from the dollar store of all places, Dollarama. It works great, and she still pulls, but not as bad. And yeah, that was that was our Saturday morning. So let's just say we got back home and. Um, <clears throat> slept because <laughs> we were physically and emotionally exhausted after that because every time i'd run up and catch up to her she'd just look at me and think she was playing and take off again mm. so yeah she shouldn't be able to get out of a prong collar but she did so um yeah body harness it is and we're gonna get another i'm picking up another leash for her so i'll have double leash okay. one on collar one on a regular collar well she's not well, one on her harness and one on her collar so that in the event she gets out of one. I have a secondary one. So anyway, it was that was our Saturday morning. It was, it was um, troublesome to say the least. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we have a few different harnesses for her, but I keep trying to find one that's like an anti-pulling harness because a couple of the ones we have, she likes to pull. This just mm -hmm. loves it, you know. So anyway, yeah, that was our Saturday morning. Um, oh man yeah um so yesterday i took her out several times and and uh, last night i'm like i have a good vibe so i took her to the dog park <laughs> with lots of other dogs and she was great she was great she just played and had so much fun and ran around and when i got her back home she was exhausted so uh, after after saturday's adventure i decided i would reward her by taking her to the, to the dog park with other dogs and she was great it was good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, heck, good. Heck of a day. <laughs> All right. Oh, you have a message to check your email, Mr. Grizzly. Doing so now. 
All right. Uh, and uh, I will take advantage of this opportunity to thank our founding <laughs> sponsors. Okay. Uh, the sorry. Peppermaster, sorry, the Peppermaster, the Misfy Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. James, you're right. I gotta do. Look, look. <laughs> so. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> James just sent me an email. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you sent me an email, um, and I have to take a photo down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I got to take the photo down. <laughs> um, yeah, this, Some... <laughs> this, this, this. Well, <laughs> I'm like, uh, let's just say, you know how. You take a photo of something, and every now and then something shows up in a reflection of something. Well, something showed up in the reflection of the television screen. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we're we're laughing hysterically about it. <laughs> like, oh no! I didn't notice. Oh, He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was a cheeky photograph. Okay. Okay. Cheeky photograph. Yes. Oh boy. Good Didn't song. even know. Didn't but, even know. I'm like, I gotta delete that. I got Saucy going bunch of naked hill hippies rolling around with no pants on. Best alarm clock ever. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> Total eclipse. <laughs> Total eclipse of the butt. Uh, <laughs> Maybe a full moon anyway. <laughs> full moon. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. So we're off the rails this morning. Thank you for pointing that out, sir. Uh, I appreciate that, James. I didn't know. So. <laughs> I, I literally did one of those things. Kettle for sale. Remember that one? Kettle for sale years ago. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my word. Uh. <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a good, yeah, yeah. The internet is forever. You are correct, Ella. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did did that happen to make a, a, a an appearance on a show? I, I, look, it will. It will. Somebody somewhere is going like, oh yeah, I'm going to keep that. Oh, I'll get pilloried for that one. What the hell is all over my coffee mug? I don't know. Oh my god, dude. Okay. Uh, it, oh. Do we have time okay. to do a show now? <laughs> I, I, how's your mental health today, sir? Well, I think it's pretty good now. Uh, I've had a great laugh, so I feel wonderful. <laughs> Laughter is great medicine, and that was a good one. That was okay. a good laugh. <laughs> I, okay, I've got to send you something. Um, since we're <laughs> James, my work here is done. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh gracious. my god! Okay, um, somebody, I think you have to go in the embedded tweet, but uh, somebody sent this to me with um, a picture of Blanche Devereaux. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Golden Girls, like this going. <laughs> Was something on the bottom written? How embarrassing! And um, with I have the caption, the video. yeah. With the caption, make this make sense. And I'm going to say that the only response I can give to this is, "Hi there." <laughs> is um, uh, I'm a beaver, not a magician. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I, 
I, I'm sorry, I got nothing for you. <laughs> I, I, I just, I can't. Well, this is the thing. Let's we'll, we'll show this video because the, <laughs> the the question to the video is 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 that Michael Myers? And I'm like, well, um, could be. Uh, certainly looks like him. Uh, let's just bring the video up here. It's a little loud and noisy because you hear generators and other stuff in the background, but um, this is a little disturbing. So for people who are at home listening and not watching, um, it's basically a shot of one of these sort of, I guess it's a roadside type of protests from the acts, the tax kind of anti-everything, whatever people that have sort of shown up since COVID. And um, suddenly into frame walks into someone dressed, walks walks into frame, someone dressed like Michael Myers from the Halloween movies with the Michael Myers mask and the sort of blue mechanic overall type things and an axe holding a Canadian flag and just standing there. Blue coveralls. Blue coveralls. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just, I don't... <laughs> And I, 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 I hear I hear six kids saucy going, okay, won't lie, that's amazing. And um yeah. And yeah, did the piano music start? If not, it's not the real Michael Myers, <laughs> exactly. Mm. Um yeah. I, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking that would have been cool though, actually. <laughs> that would have been mwah. <laughs> but I'm sitting there thinking, um well, one, uh I've seen enough Michael Myers horror movies that you know, when a guy wearing a mask and an axe just sort of shows up, you yeah. may want to get out of there. Just I, saying. You, walking around with like, an axe, just, unless there's um, a fire or you're chopping wood, I mean, it's just, yeah. I'd be that, <laughs> that, that, that guy in Scream 76 going, dude, <laughs> yeah. that's a sign. Run. <laughs> um, but the other thing is, like, as much as I want to hate this, I think it's actually quite freaking brilliant. It's hilarious. Dude, I saw that yesterday and I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, what the heck? What? What is, what is going? Why are, wh who, why? Like, why? It, it calls to me. I mean, and here's the thing, right? If it's someone that actually supports the Pierre Polyev thing, in one way, it's kind of disturbing, but yeah. it's still somewhat genius. And if it's somebody that doesn't support the people you think who's there and just trolling them, it's kind of freaking, it's kind of badass. <laughs> Which is why I can't hate it if it comes from the other, if it is coming from the other side. It's still kind of badass. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but, you know, again, it's... Maybe don't use serial killers, fictional or otherwise, as yeah. It just doesn't vehicles sound for message. getting the message out. I, doesn't send no. a good message. <laughs> just it just doesn't. It's not a good message. Oh my! my I know you're I, trying to axe attacks, but really. I, I, <laughs> Not a good way to go about it. Uh, man, then all of a sudden you got like, guy shows up in a hockey mask and another guy shows up with <laughs> knife fingers. Yeah, yeah, Freddy. <laughs> Freddy got fingers. <laughs> well, in this case, Freddy was doing the fingering. Anyway, mm. that movie scared, there was two horror movies that scared, well, yeah, that scared the living daylights out of me. Three, really, I guess, but they're sort of similar. And two of them are similar. First mm -hmm. one was Poltergeist. Oh, yes. Because I so never that, knew whether or not that actually could really happen. Well, the amount of people whose fear of clowns went up after that film, too. Yeah. But, you know, supernatural stuff, 
Mm-hmm. It's like the. I don't like gore and the horror movies, like just the slasher films like this, like don't scare me. Mm, yeah. Right? Like this, but the things, you know, like Ouija boards, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, the, that, that type of stuff is like, I, get it. I don't know if it's true and I probably don't think it's true, but uh, that's not a hill I'm willing to die on. So, mm. <laughs> I'm not, so it's like, if there's something, there's a whole other dimension going on. Like if there are like spirits, like just like right here, right now doing their thing, it's like, you, know, you do your thing in your dimension and I'll do my thing in mine and we don't have to cross. I will not like try to disturb you. Just, you don't disturb and we'll be fine. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> I just, you know, so uh, that kind of stuff, uh, that kind of stuff scares me. Um, so yeah, poltergeist uh, freaked me out, and the uh, the other one that uh, freaked me out lost the title when we were talking about before. Um, but that uh, that was the, uh, the second one. Somebody's going to remind me on the chat, I'm sure. Um, freaks me out because it's it's one of those. Oh yeah, sorry, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, that one freaked me out because anything that has to do with dreams, like the concept that if you die in your dream, you die mm-hmm. in life. Well, let's see. Here's the thing about that. Do you know how many dreams I've had where I've fallen off a cliff? Yeah. Like literally, like Wiley Coyote falling off a cliff and I hit the ground and I'm like, well, that didn't hurt. (laughs) That didn't hurt. (laughs) I get up and just dust myself off and walk away. Kind of bizarre. Yeah. So, (laughs) so yeah. And the other one was in that, that song vein was maybe a little less known. It was called Dreamscape. Which came out like in the in the eighties or something. Yeah, like that. I think it, it was also that. something about uh, like some guy that could jump in and out of dreams to try and help people or or something. And so that that kind of stuff is, yeah, I'm, yeah, just little <laughs> freaks me out. So anyway, um, yeah, Mike Byer showed up at an axe the tax rally. <laughs> yeah, uh, somebody should ask William Shatner if he'd approve. Yes, because that's who the Mike Myers mask was. It yes. was Captain Kirk, and they just spray painted it white. You caught it. That's yep. what it was. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, I just wanted—I I, I put up the link on the screen there, uh, just to let my friend Missy, who's uh, watching on Facebook, if you want to join, <clears throat> if you want to join the chat, uh, the Dam Fam, you can uh, just go to YouTube at that address, YouTube uh, backslash at True North Eager Beaver media and you can join the chat with the damn family i think you'd, i think you'd get along and love every single one of them because they're all wonderful people ah yeah, that is true the best damn fam in all of podcasting trademark mm. okay um <laughs> i don't know how to register a trademark actually so I don't uh, so i just keep on just, just saying trademark every time i say it and hopefully that'll make it stick um so today is eclipse day and uh, for those of us uh, living in the specific band uh, throughout Mexico, uh, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Kingston, all the way through Bonavista, Newfoundland, and Labrador, we'll have um, the privilege of seeing a total uh, solar eclipse. If you're not in that area, even if you're in Vancouver, you'll be able to see a partial one. Um, but in, in terms of like the full one where you get to see basically just if you if you have the proper safety glasses, please, uh, you get to see the whole corona effect uh, when the moon fully covers the sun. Um, that uh, That's a specific band, and there's expected to be a lot of tourism, uh, according to what I've been reading. City of Niagara Falls is expecting about a million people. Kingston's expecting about 500,000. Um, it's going to be busy, and um, because of the hour at which it's happening, there's a lot of schools that uh, may have yes. uh, given a lot of them have, have children completely. the day off, yeah. and uh, there's uh, there's security reasons and all of that kind of stuff. But there's also scientific reasons. Uh, it seems that uh, according to certain studies, uh, it has been found that on total eclipse days, traffic accidents go up 31 percent mm. in the time. Uh, in the couple hours preceding to the couple hours following an eclipse. And if uh, kids are leaving school around that time, um, yeah, you know, you we may not need, want We that. don't need a generation of, of, of yeah. visually impaired individuals. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, also in terms of like people looking up and, you know, no other supervision, but also in terms, like I said, traffic accidents and that type of stuff, right? You just, so. Um, 
Weird things happen on eclipses. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. So uh, full moons too. Yeah, full moons too. So um, make sure you do have a safe eye protection if you plan to check it out. Regular sunglasses will not cut it. No. Also, make sure that you actually have safe eye protection given from some place that you know because there have been some noted scams if you bought your glasses on Amazon and that type of stuff. Yeah, there's, <sighs> there's some bad stuff out there. We, a buddy of mine ordered a, um, five because he could only buy five at a time. So mm -hmm. he gave me a couple of pairs and they're solar lunar. And he says, here's how you test them. You put them on and you look up at the sun. And if all you see is like a tiny little yellow dot, he goes, you're good to go. If you, if the sun looks any brighter than that, he goes, do not, do not wear them during the eclipse. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, sure enough, I tested them both out and I'm like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, be very, very, very careful because if something happens, uh, you damage your eyes. You're not going to feel it the day of the damage appears a few weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and <clears throat> I remember the last one in 1979, total eclipse uh, over North America. And I was in Gander, Newfoundland at the time. And we were all excited for the eclipse, the eclipse, the eclipse. And then it was April in Newfoundland. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Yeah, it was overcast and foggy. And I was in mm. Gander, which is inland. That's not, that's, that's not even close to the ocean. And it was cloudy and foggy, and we didn't, it was like, there was no glasses necessary because there was no sun to be seen. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, I am going to go out on a limb and predict that today might be a national call in sick day. Probably for a long time. <laughs> I will tell you, I'm working from oh, home. So. Um, I, um, oh, I really can't come in. Day. I'm sorry. I'm going to be uh, not feeling well sometime between noon and four. Yes. <laughs> um, for those who uh, want a better view of it but don't want to risk going outside or want to see the full uh, effect of it uh, during it happening, uh, CBC. I think the regular network as well as the news network mm -hmm. will be having a three-hour special from one to four today hosted by Heather Hiscox so that you can follow it. And uh, if you're at home, uh, cbcnewskids.ca website actually has a couple of interesting resources if you, your kids are talking about it and uh, you uh, want to point them to something. So, um, yeah, it's going to so make it a fun day. Practice some safe viewing and uh, practice safe driving. If you're in a place uh, around that strip where a lot of people are coming to, be a little patient. Maybe take you longer to get in and out of places if you have traveled uh, out. Um, if you're planning to eat out, um, it might be uh, a little longer for you. Might yeah, you, longer for tables. There's going to be lineups uh, everywhere. Service might be swamped. There might be a couple, few more mistakes today. Well, so in Niagara Falls, be very kind to your servers. Population, <laughs> according to James, population in Niagara Falls is fifty thousand people, and there's something like a half a million that have gone there today. They're expecting a full million. A million. Oh, a my full million. Goodness. Yeah. So that's um, that's, that's going to be wow. Yeah, the we'll see later if those that. those are the numbers, but they're preparing for at least that much. Well, I mean, well, their sewer system can't handle that. <laughs> like this well, is going to be bad. So I'm saying it's one of those. Be kind to those who have showed up. Yeah. Days. <laughs> yeah. People will being be served in any way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, my. Wow. Bring your Canadian with you. Yes. <laughs> the extra Canadian and courtes courtes show courtesy, kindness, and say sorry a lot because you're going to need to. Yes. And, oh, and no worries. A lot. <laughs> but enjoy the day. Enjoy the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a, sometimes it's not even a once in a lifetime, sometimes once in a few lifetimes uh, events to be able to see a full one right where you are. So uh, if you have the advantage to be able to do that, uh, you know, live in the moment and maybe don't, you know, it, somebody said, I heard on t TV the other day or on the radio saying, um, you know, you can actually take the time to actually watch the moment or try to capture it on your cell phone, but um, there are already a whole bunch of people that are paired to catch it on camera. 
Yeah. The, 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 today yeah. on camera in the new spot like this. You can just, see it somewhere. Just enjoy the moment. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. Well, so a friend of mine said yesterday, he says, how much you want to bet if I put out on the Twitter, and he doesn't even have a Twitter account, he says, how much you want to bet if I put out on the Twitter that um, the eclipse is actually, the government is doing this. They're going to block out the sun for a few minutes to reboot the nanites for the software upgrade of the, the COVID vaccine. That I went, you know, here's the disturbing part. Right here. Right here. <laughs> The disturbing right part is First the amount line. of people that would believe that. <laughs> like, if you put that out on Twitter, man, people will swallow that hook, line, and sinker. It's terrible, but it's true. You didn't get your slip? No, I didn't get one. Did, did, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. That was a joke. <laughs> that was humor, folks. We were kidding about all of that. That's not. No, because you have to make it explicit these days on these things. Yes. <laughs> because if we don't say that was a joke, we weren't serious. We were just kidding. It was called sarcasm and humor. <laughs> Some people have it. Not everybody does. But it was sarcasm. <laughs> You need to acting. know that. It was acting. Exactly. John, <laughs> stop spreading acting. misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. All right. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, today, apparently, will be the release of an updated national defense policy. Yes. Uh, often you've heard people refer to something called Strong, Secure, Engaged. Uh, that was introduced in 2017 to set the priorities for the next 20 years. Uh, Defense Minister Bill Blair says that this update will guarantee the defense industry stability and predictability to face changing global realities. That's about all we know about it for the moment. I don't know if there will be anything additional updated, for example, officially in the policy that says, for example, um, the prosecution and investigation of uh, sexual misconduct cases in the military is now taken out of the military. This is a formal thing. Uh, it's uh, submitted uh, in the House of Commons under the revision of the National Defense Act. Mm. So it'll probably be uh, put in that, uh, that poll. I'm not sure if it will appear in the policy yet because I'm not sure if it's passed yet or if it says that it's coming. Anyway, there'll probably be some reference to it. Um, well, I have an email here about just that. And okay. the e email, I guess, is from a, a viewer. And thank you, uh, Team Trudeau 816. Um, the... the, the <laughs> I guess there was a press conference yesterday and a reporter asked uh, the Prime Minister um, uh, about uh, AI that is announcement tomorrow, which is going to be today, will involve Canada's defense policy. And, and, and the Prime Minister responded, <clears throat> so you want me to make tomorrow's announcement today? Ever hopeful, aren't you? Ever hopeful. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want me to make tomorrow's announcement today? No, 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 no it's tomorrow's happened. announcement. Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, yes. So, uh, Speaking of the, of the AI announcement, I think that there was one already over the course of the weekend, and I yes. would <clears throat> yes, uh, that uh, there was about two point four billion dollars set aside to build capacity in AI. Most of the money would give access to computing capabilities and technical infrastructure to researchers in industry to boost AI startups and support workers impacted by AI. Um, Padiev, um you know that uh, 24 hours clip that we showed you where the guy said, you know, I hope you remain opposition leader forever. Yes. Yeah. You're like great in that job. And he went, oh, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I, 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 you. Well, I guess he had to hear it mm. to get it, but he, the microphone was put in front of him and he got to, it's like he, uh, He's spraying billions of dollars out of a fire hose, but it's more like spraying gasoline on a fire. Uh, that's like what? 
like coming up to a, like a, a yo mama battle and go, yo mama's so nice. She makes the best chocolate chip cookies. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, okay. I, um, yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I won't, I refuse. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I do not comply. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, he submitted his list of requirements for a letter by letter to the prime minister for the budget. He wants carbon tax, car, more carbon tax carve outs to farmers. Uh, now we know that there is exemption for the production of food, but there's not exemption, for example, uh, to uh, dry uh, the, 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 the fuel that's needed to, for drying. I'm guessing it, it Kid Cassie might be able to help me out if uh, she's here today. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just drying out hay or other things like that, but no there are certain things that are not covered and there are certain things that are covered. So he's asking for more carve outs uh, to carbon uh, in that way. Um, he is asking also for, for him to require cities to permit more home building per year as a condition of receiving federal infrastructure money. Um, I'm not sure that that's not the case now because if the cities are not willing to build the infrastructure there would be no accelerator fund deals or agreements being signed i mean that's the whole point of them so i think the thing that he's asking for is actually already being done it's kind of inherent in the design right you don't sign the deal if they're not going to be willing to do the work so uh, I'm not quite sure what that's in there for. And uh, then, or as a condition of receiving federal infrastructure money, I guess he means it's for larger than just the housing accelerator fund, just for overall infrastructure money, I'm guessing. And then to find a dollar's saving for every dollar in new spending, which sounds great as a slogan, if you're not thinking of it, but um, you, the, the world doesn't work that way. The world doesn't work that way. Yes, sometimes if you want something else like this, you, you know, you decide to not go out to restaurants for a month in order to save some money to get something else. That part, yes, mm -hmm. can understand. But if there's a hole in your roof, you, you should you should patch that hole. <laughs> yeah, like this, and you shouldn't decide that you're not going to eat this month in order to make that up this month, mm -hmm. right? You. The whole concept of, you know, like this for every dollar in your spending, you found a dollar like this. Well, let's say you've cut all the dollars, but you still need to spend on something new. Now what do you cut? It's, it's, it's just some stupid jingoistic. It sounds good in 30 seconds. Well, yeah, that sounds reasonable. It's like federal budget is not a kitchen table budget. Yeah, no kidding. There's an entirely different thing. You know, so, <laughs> so he's asking for that to happen. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, James. I'll be looking at the full moon Paul provided all day today. Oh, monsieur, was it? Was it mm, mm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. you know, that's, that's yes. a dude. You got me. You got me. Yeah. My mouth was open. My mouth was open. <laughs> And then uh, the prime minister responded to sort of that with, uh, but once again, Pierre Padiev is wrong, is not listening to experts and economists, and he's willing to hurt things Canadians rely on to get through these difficult times. Not wrong, you know. <laughs> uh, I am liking this slightly saucier. <clears throat> version of the prime minister um i'm not as surprised as a lot of people that it's coming out um you know when we talk about polls and i keep on telling you the ones that we're looking at around this time you should take them into consideration as to where we've just been in terms mm -hmm. of where the public opinion is but you also have to look at it in the context of this is sort of like kicking tires. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right? There's nothing to be lost right now. A year and a half to two years, to two years and a half, that sort of period, and even up to a year. That's before an election. Sometimes it's even six months, and then there's a switch. Yes. Um, 
sometimes things revert right back to the mean right before an election and all everything that happened before just sort of gets swept away as well it sort of gives you the the underlying mood but i'm willing to be convinced and then the election you know turns something um but right now right it's just kind of <clears throat> I'm looking at the other option how much consideration is being given and yes okay you know we have a, a nine year closing in on nine year government you know mm -hmm. we'll be close to 10 by the time we get to the election um, you know which, which is usually which, leader fatigue right and, and right that's the concern like that's this concern. and but it seems that so Canadians are indicating that they are definitely open for a change or feeling for it's time for a change. It's just the question right now, is it like Stephen Harper back in uh, 2015, 16? Don't remember off the top of my head, 2015, uh, where it was clear that he was going out the door. We just didn't know whether or not it was going to be Mulcair or Trudeau mm -hmm. yeah. at that time. That was the real, it the first like half of the election was yeah. determining that. And once that was determined, then Harper was gone. Uh, and for a brief moment in that, while they were trying to decide between Mulcair and Trudeau, and they were close to neck and neck, Harper sort of popped up in the polls. But then that election, every single, all three of them was leading in the polls at one point, which was fairly rare uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so this one, um, it, you know, it's similar. You're kicking the tires. There's nothing left to, there's nothing to lose, really. There's some interest, but other things seem to be indicating in terms of polling the negatives uh for pierre polyev are still pretty solid which would indicate that this is not in the bag yet and can, people can still be convinced well, and well we finally have the media reporting on his his terrible terrible attitude towards everything and there's an article article in the toronto star that i put in the chat that talks about basically the gist of it is is why pierre polyev's over-the-top attacks on justin trudeau are bad for the country it's like they're, they're literally, the media is finally starting to report on the machina machinations. Uh, did I say that correctly? Uh, I say machinations, but I have no idea. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. It, it's the way that he's gone on about being the leader of the loyal opposition. He's just, he's just a hateful, hateful individual who attacks the prime minister on every single thing blames him for every single thing and so much of what he gets blamed for is not in his portfolio and that's the part that people are starting to pick up on which is what we've been reporting on this show for three years <laughs> no. it's like look but, go ahead and go ahead and, and attack the man on his policy but if you're blaming him for things that are not under his portfolio you're mm -hmm. an idiot yeah now see the, the thing for me is why media like us, I say media like us, not mm. us media, uh, but smaller outlets, uh, independent outlets that actually, even if they don't call themselves journalists, actually care mm -hmm. about the principles of journalism that they try to do their best to stick to them rather than just going off. Uh, but that group, why we are important uh, in a certain way is that you know, we will catch a story earlier on and start talking about it uh, and bring our audiences along. But there are a lot of stories. Like when, when I say I curate, like what I bring on to the show is about one sixth of what I take notes down yeah. of. Yeah. We, we can't right. cover so all this. What are we going to be talking about today? What's you know, how much international? I'll try to keep it more focused on Canadian and bring some international stuff if it's going to affect us or if it's really major to like overall issues of democracy. Um, but like I'm curating the news, I'm paring this down, and there is a lot of news. So the window on mainstream media is very, very, very like if they were actually doing 24 7 news where they were covering different like. Mm filling 24 uh, 7 of different news right right yeah okay you'd be fine but since it's the same news cycle cycle over over a certain number of period there's it's competition for shelf space for all intents and purposes so an issue probably that we notice here and that we're talking about and that's bowling under and brewing and brewing and brewing for months um like for example um the uh thing with 
um, oh God, uh, the Indian government about uh, the U.S. case against uh, the people that were uh, involved in assassination plots that they thought were uh, sponsored somewhat by the Indian government. When that article came out, we reported on it then, but it wasn't until a few months later after the Fifth Estate did something that it really got to the mainstream media. It was like a one-day story that sort of went under and people didn't pay much attention to, but it had to come back in another format. And so with these kinds of stories, when they finally do get some attention on the mainstream media like this, they're finally coming, it's because they've done a lot of groundwork. They've gotten a lot of people talking about it, and there's something that has happened either there's either been an accumulation of things, which in this case there has been, or there's been a moment that has come up. And that moment, for example, could have been, for example, uh, Charlie Angus mm -hmm. yeah. of the NDP, deciding that after 20 years, he is going to pack it in. Uh, the conservatives have been really targeting his writing specifically. Um, well, and, and, and uh, did you see the, the post from the leader of the loyal opposition? Well, that's what I'm referring to. For, I don't know if you have it handy. I'll dig it up. I don't have it right in front of me, but I can dig it up. Uh, but how uh, would I put it? When Baraya Mulroney passed away, and Piafeliev wrote something, mm -hmm. or from his, sorry, something was posted on his Twitter account about it. It seemed to us like, mm, he didn't write that. When Ed Broadbent passed away as well, it's like, nah, he didn't write, write that. Ed Broadbent is someone he would have crucified. Right? Brian Mulroney is someone he would have crucified. Uh, but he wrote nice things about the, well, nice things. Not Pierre Polyev traditional dickish things about them. And for me, it was like, nah, I'm not sure if you wrote that. That must have been one of your staffers. That doesn't sound like it came from you. And uh, with regard to Byron Mulroney, I think it was Frank Graves. I might be wrong on that one. Mm -hmm. That said, uh, he wrote he wrote with more passion or empathy about Bitcoin or something. Yes, because uh, it was so bland. And um, so, when someone has given over 20 years of service to the public, even if they're not of the same party as you are. People usually choose that moment to be gracious, or at least to practice the age-old tradition of, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. And then there's Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> Did you find it, Mr. Grizzly? No, I'm still looking for it here. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I found it. I got it. There you go. Got it. I just did um, a little bit of digging. All ass, no class. None. Zero. Like zero. This, 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 I mean, 20 years as a parliamentarian, whether you agree with his policies, his party, his platform, it's neither here nor there. You could wish a colleague well. And this is what Pierre Polyev wrote. Charlie Angus jumped ship rather than face voters after he voted to hike the carbon tax and ban the hunting rifles in Northern Ontarians. But ban, ban the hunting rifles of Northern Ontarians. Common sense conservatives will act, ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime, and let you keep your hunting rifle. Uh, got nothing. Like and the, the replies to this are what kind of a jerk tweets crap like this. This comment speaks to your true character. Grow up. When are you stepping down, Pierre? We have all of our fingers crossed. Meanwhile, common sense Canadians speak in complete sentences, not three word slogans. They expect concrete plans from a politician in full scale election mode. Catchphrases and rhymes are for school children. Yep. <sighs> so, yeah. Pierre uh, Podiev. Statesman. There you go. Now, uh, Charlie Angus's departure, however, uh, is notable because uh, it is now about the sixth 
sitting NDP MP who has decided they are not coming back for the next election. We heard about Daniel Blakey, mm -hmm. who has left uh, because he is going to work with uh, Premier Wab Canoe in Manitoba. And he's bringing his uh, talents over there. Richard Cannings and Randall Garrison, who are MPs from British Columbia, had previously announced that they would not be running it again. And then uh, Charlie Angus has now announced he's not running again, as is Carol Hughes. They're both from Northern Ontario. And Rachel Blaney, who is the whip and from BC, has also indicated that she is not uh, returning. Uh, as I mentioned when I was talking about Charlie Angus, his uh, writing being targeted, Pierre Polyev has been there six times. And uh, Angus has been getting a lot of hate calls and a lot of hate mail. And uh, he shared some of that with the public. <clears throat> So to know what he's kind of up against. Um, Jagmeet Singh saluted the three most recent MPs who announced that they will not return. Um, he is saying that uh, this is kind of normal in some of the cases. He says we have MPs who have been MPs for 20 years, so it's normally normal that they'll want to retire at this time. It's always hard when we lose incumbents, but we have several star candidates who will run, former city councillors and provincial representatives. Um some of the reasons that uh, the MPs have stated for leaving as well is that there will be boundary changes in the next coming election because we're going mm -hmm. from 338 seats to 343, I think. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm they're adding but, a few, but, but it's but, necessary. Or 353, maybe? I'm not sure. It's already. necessary because we've yeah. grown. Right. We've grown, but they will be adding some seats, which means that the boundaries of some of the writings, electoral districts may be changing. And that's one of the things that we talked about in the case of Jamel Giovanni. A lot of people expect them to be just a one year, one year and a half MP because the boundaries will change in both writings and he will not win. Uh, we will see. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case. But as uh, Chantal Hebert made the point uh, very astutely, I believe, on uh, the bridge with Peter Mansbridge, if not on also on at SU, is that um, these six MPs represent about a quarter of his caucus. Mm. That's true. Mm. Um, and while one may indeed you know, except that Charlie Angus, after 20 years, you know, it's, he decided it's time to go. That's enough. I, I can't accept it. that. Um, Daniel Blakey, mm. your party whip. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. And when you add to that, uh, like currently, for example, the Alberta, Provincial NDP is discussing specifically um, a provision that would make it such that being a member of the Alberta NDP does not necessarily also mean you have to be a member of the federal NDP. Because it seems uh, for the NDP, it was the case in many provinces, if not all, at, at least at origin, uh, membership in a provincial party necessarily meant membership in the federal one as well. And it's uh, over the past little while, uh, provinces have been severing that tie. Alberta has not yet, officially, even though we know that there wasn't a lot of love between Rachel Notley and Jagmeet Singh. Uh, but it seems that going into this leadership race, uh, there is a push from a segment of the membership to make that formal. Mr. Singh's not doing well, especially when you consider that, um, at least uh, based on the most recent Nanos poll, and we'll have to see how that affects on the, the aggregator, but um, anywhere under 20% is not good. Mm. 23 to 26 is performing very well, by you know, even to historical standards. 22, 21, you're sort of middle of the road, but under 20 is typically not, not considered very good for, for an NDP. Right. And uh, if you're hovering in the 16s, even, that's almost, we're looking at almost uh, being wiped out. And uh, right now, at least with Nanos, he's coming in at 18. And that's after three years of the supply and confidence agreement, which it is my personal belief 
and I've mentioned it many times, he has not marketed that well no. because he tried to market that as, you know, dragging an unwilling government kicking and screaming to the table. Which was never him, actually the case. Which was never actually the case. And he, rather than build his reputation as a mediator and as a nation builder, he chose to, you know, as a guy with strong arms, was able to use his influence to make people do stuff. We we brought you pharmacare. We brought no no no. The sitting government did, and you supported it. This, uh, but uh, this may be why he is where he is now. Is that mm. that that decision three years ago? Yeah, I'm going to sign the supply and confidence agreement. Now, that, that, that when was, we get uh, 2022, that occurred 2022, sorry, two years ago, two years I'm going to sign this agreement. Yes. And when we have an achievement, what am I going to do with that achievement? I'm going to take full credit for it. Like I did it myself. <laughs> and that, Chris, but Hey, but listen, when you're sitting in the strategy room and you're saying, you know, like this, okay, yeah, take the strategy yourself like this, but, but then you have to do something with that. You can't just pop up one day or two, say I did that. Mm. and then disappear and then the next thing that gets ticked off on the box pop up and say i did that then disappear then pop yeah. it's it's black a mole yes i like this and you can't get that much you can't have accomplished that much mm -mm. being the fourth party no you simply can't all of it you know you could maybe anti-scab legislation mm-hmm you could have taken credit for it because that's way down traditional in the roots. Dental care to a certain extent, you know. But like, let's say anti-scab legislation, let's say, even if even though you needed help, you could have said that was really us. We really pushed that. Because liberal governments in the past have used anti-scab legislation mm -hmm. to get people back to work. Both parties have done that. So that one you can claim. Is, and let a couple of others slide by say, yeah, you know, like this, if it wasn't for the cooperation, but, you know, we put it on the agenda. There were so many other ways to play that, to build and build and build. Yeah. Till you, till you get to this point, what are you left with? And I'm thinking that's the thing, you know, with Pierre Polyev, with these articles, we kept on saying it on this show. He's got 22 months. He's got 18 months. Like he can, can he maintain this for 22 months? Will this act get tired? Will this act get bored? People are bored of this act. They want to know what the meat is on the bones. They say that he has and he doesn't have any. All of a sudden, there's blood in the water. Now you're getting some of these articles. Yeah. He won't be able to keep doing this for 18 months. Like this. And if he's got nothing, if all he's got is true to bad, really. Well, and if their attitude is really going to be, we're not going to put any concrete policy in the window. We're just going to put slogans, but no real concrete policy in the window that you can analyze until the election, like Melissa's Lanceman told us around Christmas time. Yes. Then they're going to have to go. They're going to have to make write stories about other things now, aren't they? Well, I think I think Vim has is, is, uh, nailed it here. Jagmeet, Jagmeet is in it for his own ego, and I think that's. I mean, it it certainly seems to be. So it seems to me that, like I said, for both uh, opposition leaders, the seeds to their self implosion are already have already been planted and, and might be. They're starting to grow. They're starting. Might be to starting grow. to grow. Yeah. Yes, and meanwhile, you have a prime minister at the moment that is well. The seeds that he's planting are things that seem to indicate that he cares about housing, cares about AI, cares about the future of the economy, sending the signal that his government is not tired and not out of ideas. And yeah. so, we'll see where it goes. I mean, for for all three parties, that these are big gambles because with the amount of runway that there is left, if you say that three weeks is a lifetime in politics, or even a week is a lifetime in politics, and we've got about eighteen months to go. Says there's plenty of time for the liberals to do a slow, gradual shift, right? And, that's, and not have spent all their shot in that first that last year already. I think that's what they're doing right now. Yes. What, you saw that press conference the other day where the where the prime minister literally went after conservative premiers for doing nothing. I mean, mm. he he shredded them. He shredded them, and people were like, "Oh, I I didn't I, like yeah, well, he's capable." Well, that's that. the other thing right now is too is that. Usually the premiers run against the prime minister, mm -hmm. but the premiers have been so freaking obstinate. Yes, that's the perfect word. That obstinate. now the prime minister actually has a lane running against the premiers. He has a viable one. Yeah, a legitimate viable lane. This is going to be fun.
Well, it's, if the prime minister can completely ignore Polyev, run against the premiers, and just say that Polyev will do what the premiers will do, yeah, Polyev has no plan for that. Well, and and Polyev has lost Andrew Coyne some time ago. Yeah, like Andrew Coyne has no respect for this man. I mean, no, nope. he just. I'm looking at a, a column and the the art. There's a, a passage from the article that says, "It used to be people wanted leaders they could look up to. Now, the people who support Polyev." want someone as small and insecure as they are themselves. They want, rather than wanting someone they can look up to, they want someone else who will look down at the same people they're looking down on. That's exactly why Trump won, right? Because he hates the same group of people that his supporters hate, and that's all they want. And, and they don't want- be their retribution. They, they don't want uh, solutions, they don't want policy, they just want somebody to hate as much as they do too. Yep. It's really that. Guess that's what? what it falls down to. And, and, and that will not win you an election. Not in this country. It won't. There are too many good people in this country because they, they look at Paul F and see what he's doing and how he's dividing people and how he is dividing people by saying and doing the things he does. Most Canadians, the vast majority are like, I want nothing to do with that guy. They, and, and, and I know when people are like, I'm sick of Trudeau, I want to change, but we don't have an alternative. There is not a viable alternative available. There isn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm voting liberal in the next election. I've but heard that from so many people. That's going to be the campaign, right? That's going to, has to be the thing for liberals. It's, it's not, you know, I'm great. I'm going to, it's like viable versus not viable. He's not a leader. He's not a leader. And they pick on the, the prime minister for being a drama teacher. So let me see if I get this correct. The, the man who taught a semester of drama, who was actually a math and literature teacher, who also worked as a snowboard instructor and a bouncer. So somebody who's actually worked in the real world to earn money, as opposed to Pierre Polyev, who has only ever been a member of parliament, who does not have any concept of what it's like to actually work hard to earn enough money to keep a roof over your head. He has no concept. The man was 30 years, what, 33 years old? Not even that old. When he was handed his golden parachute, hmm. his fully indexed pension for life, the man could walk away from politics tomorrow and earn quadruple what I'm earning right now and do nothing for the rest of his life. And this man picks on the prime minister for actually working for a living, for being an educator. One of the most important jobs someone can have in this country by, by, by nurturing the next several generations. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they pillory him for that. Mm -hmm. Well, fuck you, Polyev. Fuck you. Fuck you for picking on the working man. Fuck you for picking on the common person and trying to play up to the common person because the common people are experts. No. No, we're not. Experts are experts. Not you. Hmm. You've never worked a goddamn day in your life. So shut your fucking pie hole. Okay, oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm pissed. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I'll dial it back. I'll reel it in. I'll reel it in. I'm sorry. I... I'm just so tired of this garbage. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of it. It's the hateful rhetoric. It's this lying. <sighs> yes, Michael, yeah. thank you. Deep breaths. Yeah. Cleansing, yeah. deep cleansing breaths. I will be doing a show at 9 p.m. this evening for those of us who need to calm down and chill out, because I do. Clearly, I do. <laughs> All right, Kids and Cubs, uh, I have to make a quick exit. So that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring. Word of mouth is riceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. Uh, if you would like to make sure you do not miss an episode, you do not have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. She has sponsored our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when you subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, that'll come directly to you. And if you're watching right now, the QR code that just appeared underneath my goatee, if you scan that, that will bring you right there. If you would like to help us out in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated you 
YouTube page and click on like, share, and subscribe or any combination of those buttons. We don't care, but we hope you click all three because <laughs> that makes us happiest of all. Um, and if you would like to support us in other ways, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head brings you to the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. Ah, <sighs> and yes, this beaver definitely will need to be kept hydrated. <laughs> uh, moving from one show to another show to family coming over. It's been a busy time and renovations. So, yes, I need a drink. And if you would like to help out with that, well, if you scan that QR code, that brings you to our coffee page. Coffee, that's ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. Sorry, no hyphen between each one of those words. Lowercase letters all in one word for our coffee page. So let me try that again. ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters all in one word. There you go. And if you like what we do, we would definitely appreciate a contribution. But of course, the gift of your attention is the most important. We thank you very much for that. If you'd like to write to us, we'd love to hear from you. TrueNorthEagerBeaver at gmail.com. And if you're listening on Apple, please, please, please leave us some stars and some reviews. Very, very grateful for that. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your Eager Beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. I forgot to say because democracy is something that you do, write those letters. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom, please? Yes, do not stare at the sun ever, especially today if you're in southwestern Ontario or in the Ottawa Valley or in Montreal or in parts of New Britain. Do not look at the eclipse unless you have proper protective eyewear because you will go blind. All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, as Kit Michael would say, Cue that cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Uh, kids, you, you're just the best up there. <laughs> Hydrate your beaver. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. It was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And, and check the background of your boudoir photos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always check the background of your boudoir photos. All yeah. right. All right. Just let it go. I'll see you. Um, yeah. All right. Take Good care. Luck. Bye.